so welcome to the Welch Review. Today we got a pretty great treat and it comes in the form of what stuff? We are talking Mike Flanagan and Stephen King together again to make Dr. Sleep. Yeah, so Dr. Sleep's probably uh, one of my favorite films. Uh, definitely one of my favorite kind of like thrillery films. I yeah. wouldn't necessarily call it a horror movie because I, I don't really think it's scary. But um, definitely in that kind of like thrillery category. But uh, it's very good. Who's who's in it? Who's thrown down? So we got Obi Wan Kenobi himself, Ewan McGregor. We got Rebecca Ferguson. We got Cliff Curtis. We got Kylie Curran. We got Zach McLaren. We got Bruce Greenwood. You have Henry Thomas from E.T. who plays Jack Nicholson or like a bartender, but you'll, you'll see that in the film. He's from E.T. Yeah, he plays the little boy. He plays the little boy in yeah. E.T. and now he's Jack Nicholson. Yeah, and then Yo. you have the man, the myth, the legend, Carl Lumley as Dick Holleran. Oh, okay. Wait, did, did he play? Dick he was in the show sleep? Mantis. That was like one of his biggest things. Him and Danny Glover are real good friends. That's cool. I like. But Danny. no, he's not the original Dick Holland. Okay. Well, well, yeah, that guy's probably dead by now. Sad. Yeah, sad times. And then it was, uh, as said, you know, it's written by Stephen King based on his novel, uh, which is the sequel to Doctor Sleep that follows uh, young Dan Torrance. And um, this is the second adap King adaptation that Mike Flanagan has done. He previously made uh, Gerald's Game for Netflix, and then he's working on another one with him called Revival um, right What's now. What's Gerald's Game? Gerald's Game is uh, this um, I, story follows this couple that go away for a weekend to spice up their love life. And then, like, right before they're about to, uh, you know, have sex, he dies of, like, a... A, um, a heart attack, and she's handcuffed to a bed. Oh, that's not good. All right, so anyways, back to <laughs> talk about what we were talking about. Uh, sorry, I derailed. No, that's okay. Um, so, yeah, so this movie probably one of my favorites. It opens up on, uh, on um, our boy Doc, who is, uh, again, Daniel Torrance, but that's, like, his nickname, and it kind of follows him throughout his life, which is cool. Mm. Uh, so it picks up with him as a little boy, and he's being haunted by the things from... Um, from the Overlook Hotel. From the Overlook Hotel that had haunted him in the first movie. Uh, and then eventually we go to see um, Dick, who's uh, a very, very nice man. Teaches him how to put Carl these things Lumley. away in boxes and defeat them. Uh, but quickly after that, Doc kind of like degenerates, right? At least from what we see, it kind of skips like 20 years ahead. Uh, but he becomes like an alcoholic and a drug addict, uh, he's violent, he gets into uh, bar fights a lot, uh, he steals money from essentially uh, dead mothers. Uh, yeah. Like he, he takes, he, did, he doesn't kill anybody. In short, he's, he's bad scum. Dude. Yeah, yeah, he's like, here's, here's like where he started and then he was like, psh, rock bottom uh, pretty quick. Um, and that, I'm pretty sure, according to the film, all happens, like, after his mom dies. Um, so, uh, a lot of this is in an attempt to hide The Shining, which he's afraid of, because Dick had told him that, uh, there are, like, other terrifying things out there. Yeah, go bump it. And as he says, uh, which is probably, and how Lumley delivers it is, like, you know, there's a hungry world out there. Yeah. You yeah. know, and... The brightest things are what are what's hunted, right? That's what people feed on. Yeah, and he has the shining, so he shines very brightly. And he's, like, the brightest shiner out there, you know what I mean? Um, so now, as the story picks up, right? So, like Sam was saying, we see Doc, Dan Torrance, and his mother. They're now in Florida, and she's now a single mom trying to raise him and make sure he's okay. But it also showcases this other group of like soul sucking vampires about them. called like the true knot yep and they are led by rose the hat and um uh she calls him her crow and then like yeah, grandpa the flick and then there's like a, a variety of other people in it who aren't really as important the big one is crow and uh rose the hat yeah and now while Doc is trying to get a grip of himself and what power, you know, he possesses and how to, you know, work with that. These people are out there going bump in the night, tracking people who shine down 
and killing them to ingest their yeah. their their shine, their soul. Yeah, they murder them, torture them, and then like eat their powers. Uh, and ninety nine percent of the time, the people who they do this to are children. So they're like, like you know, like on the bad person scale, you have like normal person, like I don't know, maybe low time criminal, and then like way over here is Nazi. Uh, well, after that, you, you just keep going, and then you hit these guys. Yeah, soul-sucking vampires yeah. all the way. And if you're worse than Nazi, generally you're a bad person. <laughs> bad person. Uh, like, 99% of the time. So, yeah, so these guys, terrible dudes, uh, bad time to be around. Um, and it's exactly these kinds of creatures or people or whatever you call them yeah. that, that Dan Torrance is, like, chugging booze like it's nobody's... Business. business to try to hide his shine because he's petrified. He has like PTSD from the things in the Overlook Hotel and the idea that there's other things out there uh, is, you know, horrifying. Um, so circling back to Sam said, right, so we, we find Dan now like 20 years uh, older, down as like he said, bottom. Um, he's come to realize like, you know, I need to change, I need to do something, yeah. you know, to have some semblance, you know, of a life like a dick comes to him and it is like you know basically scolds him right yeah. tells him you the least you can do is like leave him their money doc you know be like be better yeah. so he goes all the way to Fraser New Hampshire and while he's up there he comes into contact with Cliff Curtis and he starts trying to he gets himself sober yeah and he gets a job as an orderly which is again where the name doc comes right so people who are in the hospice care, they're dying and they feel pain, and they mistake him for a doctor. He's like, you know, I'm not a doctor, and then, you know, they're freaking out about dying. He uses his shine to calm them. So they yeah. call him Dr. Sleep. Yeah. Uh, there are, he also tends to be, like, the last person they see before yeah. they die. Uh, but that's touched upon more in the story, and we won't get too much into that. So, um, so yeah, so he's Dr. Sleep, so that, that name Doc continues... And eventually, just like Dick, it becomes his responsibility to help out this little girl uh, named Abra. Abra. Who, uh, Kylie Curran. Yeah, who's also not a Pokemon, but also has psychic powers. <laughs> um, and is being hunted by the True Knot. Uh, basically, she's even more powerful than Doc is with the Shine, but she's very young. You know, doesn't have a uh, full grasp of her power. So Doc, again, like Dick, is trying to save and protect her. Uh, from these bad guys. Which, um, in a sense, is kind of like Dan Torrance's redemption story, right? Like, all the wrong things he's done, you know, prior oh, yeah, to this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's like his, his redemption. And Dick kind of tells him, you know, like, you know, you just walked into my kitchen one day, and yeah. I'm still on the hook for you. Yeah, one of the things that Dick is very, like, persistent in bringing up is the idea that people have debts. Uh, debts to pay in life, and it might not necessarily be like a you know physical debt, yeah. but uh, for example, uh, when we first see Dick in this movie, he's talking to Doc. They're sitting on a bench together. Doc's still a kid, uh, and they're talking, and he's saying, you know, like don't freak your mother out. Like be good to your mom because she's paid her debt. Yeah, she's paid her debt in life, and she doesn't deserve to worry. Uh, and then. Um, Dick's own debt is to help protect Doc. Yeah. Um, and then Doc's debt is to help protect Abra, uh, and so on and so forth. So basically, there's like this persistent idea that everybody has like a purpose that they need to achieve, and nine times out of ten, it's protecting somebody important. Um, so that, I don't know, it's cool. The movie just has like a ton of symbolism all the time. Yeah. Uh, and everything is cohesive, and everything makes sense. And it's great, but without giving away too many spoilers, like, how do you feel about um, Obi-Wan Kenobi's portrayal of Dan Torrance? You know, I was kind of shocked from the beginning when they were announced, you know, Ewan McGregor would be um, Dan Torrance. I've never actually seen him in, a, like, a horror uh, thriller-esque film before yeah. so it's kind of like new territory but he's a phenomenal actor yeah. and I, I, I believed him when he was a scumbag and then I believed him when he really wanted to you know become better and yeah. become like worthy of, of his gift um, there's a scene in it where he gives a speech and you said it while we were watching the movie that like 
you know, they made it, like, real. Because films try to give, when, when characters give big speech, like, speeches, they're given the opportunity to, they're, they kind of sound perfect. And yeah, like, like you they're know, all, like, amazing speeches. Right. Yeah. And then he, d he, you know, Dan Torrance gives his speech, and Ewan McGregor, you know, has moments where he pauses, you see he's choked up, that he's stuttering with mm -hmm. some things. You see the, the fear he has about messing up, so he, he cuts it short. Yeah, he, like, cuts out, like, he starts something and then cuts it out completely because... Yeah. Like, he starts to talk about The Shining, and then he's like, ah, normal people won't understand that, I've got to cut that out of my speech, you yeah. know? So, I think Ewan McGregor did a very, very good job. Like, a very good job. He's a very good actor, and I think this opens up new new territory yeah. for him. Yeah, and then one of the other things that you just brought up is um, something that's kind of important throughout this entire film is Dan's redemption arc, right? Uh, so, like you said, you believed him when he was a scumbag, you believed him when he was recovering, but that's not the only part of his redemption. Like, he goes from, um, having PTSD about the overlook in his childhood and his dad, which is all very justified, to somebody who's strong enough to protect Abra, yeah. who's strong enough to, to use The Shining to defend himself, and not only that, and I'm not going to get too into it, but he uses the things that used to terrify him to defeat his enemies, mm. even though, uh, like, it might have adverse effects for himself. So he goes from, like, an incredibly afraid person, you know, somebody who has, like, hit rock bottom, yeah. to, to fixing that about themselves and just being about, you know, fixing himself, to being somebody who's willing to put their life on the line to save a little girl who he's never met before. You know, so, like... His, his entire being changes throughout the film, and Hewan McGregor does an amazing job portraying every step, except, of course, from when he was a child. Right. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, can't, I couldn't be more satisfied with the Daniel Torrance character that's shown in this movie. It's just very, very good. Uh, but he's not the only good actor in this no. film. Unlike the last movie that we reviewed, <laughs> Bad Moon, Bad Moon, <laughs> Bad Moon, Bad Movie. All right, we're going to pause. Okay, we're going to pause right here because our battery's... All right, so we're back with a full battery. We're uh, back. We have a full battery. Yes. Yeah, and um, we had just left off uh, with talking about Dan Torrance. So... Um, and uh, you said other actors who did very good. Yeah, yeah. So now, I think... We can unanimously say together, like, everyone in this movie brings their A game. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, he's really good in it. Um, I want to say Cliff Curtis, who plays Billy Freeman, who is um, Dan Torrance's, like, best friend in this. Uh, he's totally an underrated actor, and he does a really good job at providing some, like, some light humor, you know, and some real good emotion to it. Um, but Carl Lumley, man, as Dick Hollerin. Like, whenever he's on screen, it's just powerful. Yeah. You know, um, there's a scene where he's he's talking about the true knot, and he's like, they eat fear, and they drink screams. Like, you know, or no, they eat pain, and they drink screams, and it's like, wow. That's scary. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, I don't know, and what, it's just whatever he says comes out very powerful. Um, you know, and he, he definitely, like, he seems like he's been in the game a long time, but I really hope we see him in more things. Like, from that opening line, like Sam says, whatever he says is powerful, and you pay attention to it. But, like, when he says, you know, Doc, the world's a hungry place, like, that hits you. That hits you hard. You know, I think um, another performance that's noteworthy is um, uh, um, Rebecca Ferguson. As Rose the Hat? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Rose the Hat, again, main bad guy in the show, leader of the True Knot. Um, head, uh, baddest bitch ever, as Crow <laughs> yeah. says later on in the... Yeah, baddest bitch ever supreme or something like that? Something I don't know. like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Give, give us a little bit of information uh, about Rose well, the Hat. Well, she, she seems how, like, she's very, like, um... She wants you, she's very persuasive, like she wants you to join in, she wants to get you close, and even if you know, like, she's bad news bears, like, you still fall for it, right? And that, that says something about the level of performance, you know, she's able to do. Like, uh, she's hiding in plain sight, you see her, you know, she's, you know, very appealing, 
and she talks the talk, but when she seeks your teeth in you, you know, like in the opening, the opening with the girl Violet. Yeah. Like, you know, very welcoming, inviting, you know, tries friendly. to be friendly, and then, you know, yeah. s- snaps real quick. It's, it's kind of like she... She's so confident. Yeah. And, like, you know, she's so sure of herself that whatever she does is almost like seductive like mm. when and not not necessarily in like a creepy way like, right right but you know like she'll pick you apart mentally immediately uh the the first girl that um that gets killed is in the first 10 seconds so i don't really feel bad telling you about it but um she she likes flowers and without ever talking to this little girl rose the hat figures that out comes up with a magic uh, magic trick to like lure her in and keep her there long enough for her to be kidnapped. So while she's a disgusting human being, yeah. uh, she is very smart, uh, very cunning, and very 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 sure of herself. Um, you know, like Abra at some points basically you know gives her the back of the hand. You know what I mean? She yeah. like uh, very soundly defeats Rose the Hat at her own game. At her own game, and Rose the Hat's like, "Well, I just want to defeat you even more now because mm-hmm. that's how confident she is in herself." But speaking of Abro, Kylie Curran, Curran or Curran, however you pronounce it, I feel like she's definitely somebody to watch. You know, she did. She definitely held her own. Oh yeah, she was amazing. You know, with uh, Ewan McGregor and Cliff Curtis, Rebecca Ferguson, like she really did a really yeah. great job. So Kylie Kylie Curran plays Abro, just yeah. in case we didn't. That. Um, but she does great. She really does great. She owns it. Um, the part where they they do a scene where she can feel the same experience as one of the people the knot gets, and like she owns it. She goes full throttle emotionally. Yeah. And uh, you know, but then just as quick, you know, the next scene she can keep her composure. Yeah. So throughout the whole thing, Abra's kind of like a, an angry little girl, right? It's not like. And I, I wouldn't say that she's, like, overly emotional. She has reasons to be mad. She has reasons to want revenge against the knot. True. You know, like, everything that she feels and acts on is justified. But, you know, like, the whole time she's very, like, angry with the knot. Uh, and it comes out. Like, um, there's there's moments where, like, <laughs> members of the knot are being killed. And Abra's just like, you deserve this. Like, you or, know what I mean? I hope it hurts. Yeah, a like... Lot. Like, what 12-year-old girl just sits there like, oh, you dying right now? <laughs> you deserve that. You deserve that. I hope you die painfully. You know what I mean? Like, that's not something that you think of when you think, like, 13-year-old uh, girl. But then again, as a teacher, I know that that's exactly how they think. <laughs> oh, so... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, also, like, moving, uh, I think, aw- away from, like, the performances, because, like I said, everyone brings their A-game. Those are just people who really stand out. Yeah, um, they're also the most this the movie like sam said it definitely has a couple you know intense and scary scenes i wouldn't necessarily say it's a horror film but the mike flanagan does his best at amping that feeling up whenever the knot succeeds in their mission yeah that's that's when you know fear and you know afraid and scare scared you know those things kind of set in uh, you know and not that that's constant like you don't. You're not constantly afraid throughout the movie, so like it comes at you in pieces. Mm-hmm. You know the fear, and I think that's a very smart move. Um, yeah, past past the horror part, I think something that the movie does very well is um, it, it does a good job exploring different emotional themes. Mm-hmm. So, like we were just talking about with Daniel Torrance, like there's scenes where he confronts his father and himself. In fact, there's multiple scenes where he does that. Uh, And you'll see when you watch the film uh, what I'm talking about. There's some that are very, like, physical and blatant. There's some that are, um, you know, more metaphorical. Um, There's definitely... I wouldn't say scenes where he's looking for the approval of um, of Doc. Not not Doc. Of his dad. Uh, Well... Moving past his dad, oh, looking for, the for Dick's of approval. Dick, Absolutely. Realistically, Dick is like his main father figure. The only, you know, the only male figure in his life that ever like cared and took care of him 
and taught him. I feel like that scene where Dick's like, you know, as far as I can see, son, you, you turned into a fine boy. Yeah, and yeah. like it's like, hey man, fine. you need to you need to step up now. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right, you're right. Uh, absolutely. And like you know, the light in Hugh and McGregor's eyes when he sees that it's that it's Dick there, yeah. it's like, oh my god, like you know, like I missed you so much, like you know, you, it really sells like that's somebody who he loves, you know, um, so that's that's really cool to see. Uh, from a cast, and then aside from that, Abra's trying to figure out who she is as a human. You know that that's kind of like her whole story arc. Like, should I use this power that I have, or should I hide it away from the world? Mm. Um, and Hugh McGregor again is a big part of that, but um, you know something that you'll have to see. You know, but all in all, I feel like because they even mentioned toward the end, and you know, I don't know what Stephen King will come up with if he'll write a third book or not. But the movie, at least, seems like it it leaves it open ended. Like definitely, Dan Torrance's chapter is, you know, uh, tied up nicely in some sense. But also, like, you know, he mentions like you know whatever is out there, right? Be it something scarier than the knot or not, you know, he tells you to keep shining. So, you know, it'd be interesting if they did something that just focuses on Abra in the future. But, yeah. you know, overall, Sam, in like terms of like Mike Flanagan, you know, as a, a his directing style, you know, what'd you, what were your thoughts on some of that? I mean, I don't really know how to answer that question, but what I can tell you uh, is that I love this movie. Uh, it's one of my favorite films. It does a great job exploring um, different emotional issues with our, the main cast. It does a great job exploring like kind of real visceral terror um, in a few um, specific situations throughout the film. But it... Uh, I don't know, like, every every character is fabulously executed, every plot line is, like, well concluded, I don't know, it's just a very solid film, and I don't have anything but positive words to say about it. Um, no, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. It, it's classic, I'm sure by, at some point in time, it'll be considered, you know, one of the top ten or the standard for what it is, I think he all it, it does a good job of paying tribute to Kubrick's version of um, the, Shining. the Shining. You know, Flanagan was real open. Uh, I read with writing, and he told Stephen King, who I, for whatever reason is not a fan of that, because King went yeah, on to make his own version yeah. of The Shining. But Kubrick told Stephen King, "Listen, this is going to have to directly tie to the Shining. Know, Kubrick's Shining." Yeah. You know, and I think he did enough of that to make, you know, the diehard fans pleased as well as, like, you know, bring new fans aboard. Yeah, no, just a great film. Um, go know. and watch it, like, right now. Yeah, do yourself um, a favor, pick it up. They have a Walmart, like, uh, two movies for one, and it's The Shining and this, so you got a night right there. Yeah. Anyways, this has been The Welch Review with probably one of my favorite films. Doctor Sleep. Go check it out. Remember, the world's a hungry place.